Hi everyone and welcome to a new video. Here we've got a lamp that I actually use as my bedside lamp um, and I want to convert it. Now to be honest this has actually already gone through one conversion. This is an old IKEA lamp um, and what I, originally it was designed for taking uh, 240 volt bulbs um, so I converted it so let me just take, oops, sorry for the noise, take the shield off so you can see on here um, initially my first conversion was to take out the 240 volt uh, socket and replace it with a 12 volt one so then it can just run straight off 12 volt with a LED replacement. Again this is really old now. In fact actually it's, see the yellowing on it. I mean that's got old in the bottom there's quite white but yeah. Um, so yeah this now actually unfortunately occasionally starts flickering nothing serious but it is just annoying when it's going off so that's one thing that's driving this change the other thing that i've done just or it's just something else to do before i was really aware of um rgb uh leds per se um or addressable rgb anyway is this strip at the bottom which is actually is uh, a, a non smart shall we say rgb strip but it was actually just programmed programmed it's just been wired at the end here just for the blue ends so um yeah it was designed so that there's a switch that i can switch between either just having this led running so just a warm white type uh light uh, or i could flick it over and then have this as well as the strip running as well so it gives a slightly bluer, bluer hue so what my plan is for this is to effectively strip all of this out so we get rid of the uh, LEDs, we'll get rid of this. Um, what my actual plan is to use this uh, aluminium piping um, to effectively just wrap the RGB LEDs. So what I'm actually using here, these are addressable ones which have uh, an actual white LED in them as well. These are neutral white. Um, I went for neutral right because hopefully it's in the middle. So what I can actually do there is add in blue or red if I want to warm it up or cool it down. So that's why I've gone for these particular ones which WLED does support. I've done some quick tests on it um, to make sure that WLED is okay with that. And it does what I thought it would do um, with the best will in the world. It wasn't clear to me anyway. Um, exactly how it behaved with the white LEDs um, and it does do what I hoped it would do. So we're going to go with these and the idea is I'll just basically pop them on here and just wrap them around so they'll go up in a spiral um, and basically cover the whole thing. And the reason I've gone for an aluminium tube is just as a bit of a heat sink. Um, so it's just some way of basically being able to dissipate the heat that these will be generating. So the idea for that is with that we can, uh, what I'll do is actually 3D print a little bracket that will clip into this central section. So it'll actually clip around this piece here, obviously once that's been removed, and then this will just sit in the middle, um, clipped onto that, LEDs around it, and then obviously with the uh, glass diffuser around it will hopefully diffuse the light nicely. So you can have a choice really, it can be any color you want. So it can go from a nice sort of just white color just so that you can have light to read with uh, or potentially and this is again I don't know whether this is even possible but one thing I've kind of thought of with this is seeing if I can find a way to have a sort of sunrise so as this is sort of sitting in here having it so that the LEDs will slowly start to color up the thing and then turn into a basically like a sunrise type effect as it goes up the uh, tube so that's the plan so what I'm going to do today is get the aluminium tube wrapped with LEDs and then we'll wire that up to my test uh, unit so I can make sure that's all going to work um, the way I hope it will we'll balance it into the actual uh, light fitting just so that we can see whether it's going to diffuse the way I hope it will um, so yeah we'll make a start on getting the LEDs on the aluminium tube so first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol and a cloth and I'm just going to quickly oh, spray the outside and give that all a quick clean just to make sure that any of my greasy greasy fingers, my human greasy fingers, uh, we've removed as much of that as we can. 
And see now I've literally just removed the grease from my fingers, so that's not a good thing to do, to be honest. You really don't want to get this on your hands too much because it will dry your fingers out. So if you do end up doing something like that and you get a lot of it on you, um, wear gloves. Uh, but the other thing is you can also obviously just moisturise afterwards if you need to. But try to avoid it in the first place. So let's get this on here and I'm hoping I can get this right. And then just before we attach the remaining ones, see how high up, oh, look at that. Right on the shoulder joint, that's annoying. Right, so we need to desolder that first. Make sure that's nice and tight on there. So I'd actually already cut one of the LEDs off, hence the reason why there's no solder on that side. So this should give us, uh, 59 LEDs if I'm right on this, so. It's 58, 59. <laughs> You'd almost think I planned that. I didn't, I rarely plan anything, so. Uh, <laughs> but I quite like the, uh, because it's all not a complete, uh, the circumference of this doesn't quite match up with the length of the LEDs. So you get this nice sort of almost spiralized pattern to the LEDs, which yeah, it's just a cosmetic thing, but should be interesting to look at if it does do anything on the unit. So next up here, uh, we need to get a connector on the end so that we can then give this a quick test run and see how well it will work. In order to connect this up, obviously we need to get a connector onto the end so we can wire it in. Uh, something I did just think of, I'm not too sure, it's a massive issue, but obviously we've got the connectors here, which I'm gonna to need to solder onto. Now I know solder doesn't actually, uh, isn't compatible with uh, aluminium, that's what it is, or aluminum. But what I wanna do, just to be on the safe side, is I'm gonna, and I hope this doesn't completely ruin the adhesive, I'll knock that up later. Not too important for our testing. Okay, so next up, let's get some solder on them and we'll get our connector wired in. So again, we've got five data and ground, and as usual, that's going to be red, green, and white with this color coding scheme. So hopefully now I should be able to wire this up to my test rig and see if it works. Um, I've got a funny feeling I removed a cable from this and I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> uh, right, let's just see if it works. So let me just take, this is the one I cut off the end by the way, just to check to see how the white works. So let's make sure I wire this up right. So the yellow is actually connecting to white. So I'll just connect in that way. We go. So let's see power bank and power cable. So again, I'm only running this off of the USB uh, power supply for the time being, just because we're only interested to see if it works. There we go. So <laughs> our single LED that is now lit. Uh, okay. Now the next question is, we'll, uh, I'll quickly just jump on the computer, I'll update the uh, information so it knows that there are 59 LEDs uh, and then we'll add on from there. So let me just do that. So I've reduced the exposure down quite a bit just so that hopefully we can see something on there. Let me just see if I can get a bit lower without it becoming, no, that's flickery, there we go. It's about as low as I can go, unfortunately. So at this point, I've got it set up. It's just the default orange. Now, the way that I've actually set WLED up is uh, I've enabled the white channel to be separate. So the idea being is that I can then just bring in the white channel if I want to, just so that, that way we can get a whiter light. So if I want a nice warmish light, I can add in a bit of orange and so if I get rid of the white, see a nice deep orange, 
bring that in and then that enables us to do uh, a brighter orange as it were and then we've obviously got presets which we can invoke as well there are other modes which i do want to play around with uh, with the uh, software so it can calculate the white channel on its own as well um, so that's something i want to have a look at uh, in going forwards with it but at the moment it is doing largely uh, what I would like so that's good so the next thing is if I can try and find a way of reorganizing all of this so um, yeah my next plan or next thing I want to do is just quickly find a way of temporarily holding this into the light uh, and we'll see how that then looks as well okay so what we've got in here I just want to carefully lift this up see that's sitting in there we've got the cable pan down a bit Oops. So cables are all in here. Um, obviously the circuit's all ready to go. So let's have a look and see what this looks like. Sorry for my arm getting in the way. Turn it on. And it's not working. Hey! Why is that not working? Oh, oh there's my connector on there. Right, so we can see we've got the orange glow. Now let me just turn that light off hopefully get a better look at it so again let's just mess about with some of the colors so if we go so it's in red um right i need to adjust the exposure again so let's there we go hopefully there isn't too much flicker there um doesn't look like it on the screen but never know so we've got the uh, red and obviously we've got all the usual colors we can do here um, and obviously going over to a nice warm white um, there is a bit of a flicker on there but I think it's just down to the fact that it can't pump enough power through the uh, LED uh, sorry not the LED the WLED controller board so um, I think we're possibly hitting power limits on that which I have set in the software so it will also get a lot brighter we don't have the brightness at full power yet either so it is working that way so let's have a look and see if we can create so some uh, <laughs> interesting effects going on with it now um, so we can do various bits and pieces there with it which gives different effects now it's not the primary purpose for this but um, yeah, it does make it look a little bit more interesting it's from my favourite, the fireworks. There we go, that's the one we want. <laughs> that's quite a nice little effect actually. Utterly useless as a visual aid, but yeah, it does work quite nicely. So next thing to do then is to uh, create the 3D printed bracket for the bottom of this so that we can mount the uh, light into it securely so that hopefully that way we can uh, make it more usable. Another thing that I have already got designed and is on order is a smaller circuit board. So uh, obviously in the last one we were looking at this board here which was designed for the nano leaf type uh, lighting system. So uh, we've got here that one which is actually quite large. I mean it's as large as the thing on top so what I've done is resized it because obviously I mean most of this board is empty it's just that little bit in the middle um, I have redesigned it though so that it does utilize the space a bit more it's also got the option to use the relay with an actual relay so if you want to be able to turn the whole thing off it can actually do that as well so um, I have got a new PCB it is on order we'll probably look at that on the next one so I'm hoping that'll turn up sometime next week so then I can record a video about building it and what it does. Then we'll need to look at some way of integrating that into this. Um, so let me just bring the exposure, oh, wrong way. There we go, let's bring the exposure back up. So yeah, uh, so that way obviously we can get rid of all of this so we can have it a nice simple thing, but we need to have a box or something that can then sort of stick out the bottom here. So there'll be a button on it again. So that way we can turn it all on and off from here. Um, I'm also probably going to keep my other switch as well so I can actually turn the whole unit off um, and then we'll look at the way that we can actually use WLED when it turns on to go to a specific preset so if I just want to have it as a bedside light it can just be white as well um, but that's it for this video um, and thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one